This screencast is going to walk through reusing the WebForm Modules APIs. My name is Jacob Rockwitz. I'm known as Jay Rockwitz on the web. I am a Drupal developer and software architect. I built and maintain the WebForm module for Drupal 8. What are some examples of reusable WebForm APIs? Well, the WebForm module extends Drupal's Form API to enhance and improve a form's user experience. So, what you see the web form doing is on top of Drupal Core's form API. If you see a text field, that's coming from Drupal, Drupal Core. And then if you see an additional enhancement to it, like input masks, or if you go to a drop down menu and it's being converted to a select two menu, that's the web form module kind of enhancing that core behavior. And some examples of that are input mass, input hiding, character and word counting, international telephone number support, inline dismissible messages, and then this behavior where if a user starts filling out a form and they navigate away before hitting submit, you can warn users about unsaved changes and try to prompt them not to lose them. So here's an example of an input mask, just the phone number, and then there's input hiding there. And this is just the word counter, you know, where as you fill it in, it'll count the number of words. And that's the international telephone number, which is going to kick in some validation to say that the number is invalid. I'm not really sure why that's happening, but that's an inline dismissible message. And finally, we're going to see the prompt for warning users about unsafe changes. Now we can keep going and talk about how can you leverage WebForm APIs. Well, the WebForm Devel module generates and demonstrates how to convert a web form to a custom configuration form. And a configuration form in Drupal, it, it allows users to enter and change settings which are used to display custom information or adjust the behavior of a website. The two most popular uses of a configuration form in Drupal core are the site settings form and the performance form. Site settings meaning, you know, entering in the site title, the custom message, the default 404 page, you can change that. And if any module includes configurable settings, this information is managed usually using a configuration form. And so to convert a web form to a form API form, you know, you need to define the web form related elements and properties you want to use, then process those elements using the web form element manager service. And then you could attach, you know, the desired web form JavaScript behaviors. And it's hard to, you know, the best way to show this is to point out some code. And I have my little red thing here to walk through and say, here's, you know, this is a build form is a form API interface method. There's three of them, build, validate, and submit. That's how forms work. And this is getting the configuration settings for a custom module. And it's rendering one element. It's a node. It's to collect nodes. It's an entity autocomplete. This is core. Title is core. But then you're saying you only want to collect 15 of those nodes. And the rest of this is just typical settings in Drupal core. This 15 kicks in right here when you call the element manager, which you'll see a little more about that in a second, but to process the element. So basically it's enhancing this normal form API element with web form enhancements. And then right below we're seeing attaching behaviors for unsaved. And it's just two things. You're adding a class to the form and then you're adding a JavaScript library, and then the, you're returning the form. Now, the best way to show you what's happening is this. This is a rich element that you can have in any configuration form you build. It's just generating a list of nodes, very quick and simple, and you can customize any aspect of this. You can hide and show the plus and minus buttons. You can say how many add more items. You get, you get to take advantage of the web forms APIs. Now, the WebForm Devel module generate, you know, that export generates four files. It's the form, the configuration settings form, the default configuration just to get you started, the route to have that form available to users, and then a module info file. So basically, makes a gives you a little quick module that you can install on your site. I have to demo this to best explain it. So the demo that I have is there is actually an example, a WebForm example custom form. And what it does is install this form. And this form is a web form and shows you, it's basically trying to show you all the different elements that you can have available. And you can see it's a lot of rich features that you can bring into your own custom form API forms. You can even have your cute kittens and you can have custom composites and there's the input hiding and there's all the messages. Let's see, inline message. So let's go up 
and we go to the export tab and I have the web form develop module. I think people are very familiar with this configuration, but when I switch to the form API tab, you're going to get the info to generate, basically it takes the name of the form and generates a module. It gets the route. Here's the route to have a callback. And let's, let's, so for the demo, this module actually will generate this route, but give me a second. I'll show it to you in a second. This is the back end code to get you started. And what it's doing is it's taking two services, the token manager and element manager, which the web form module uses, sets them up, gives you a form ID, sets the configuration form. And then this gets very long because it's basically taking your web form YAML source and converting it to PHP putting all the properties you would need to get started. And I'm going to scroll, it's going to take a while, but you can see there's your rich date picker. There's your manage file upload if you need a quick way to upload files. There's the cute kittens for image selection. I could see using this for logos or you know custom little images that you need to insert in the site. We're going to keep going and we get to the element manager processing the elements token manager replacing any tokens if you were using them. And then we're attaching the web form library and little extra enhancements with, and you can decide which ones you want by just removing this code. Autofocus the first element, warn users. For details elements, you can track whether they're open or closed. Then you return the form. And this is a little helper to say, hey, this is how you would handle the submitted values from that form and it would save it. This is a working example of a configuration form with here's some default data. And look at this default data for a second. You see it? And now if I go in, that form has been installed in that example module. And here's that working form. This is no longer a web form. This is a custom configuration form that you can make changes to. Hit save and boom, you're done. I hope this inspires you to kind of get started to kind of reuse some web form APIs. I'm gonna keep going because it's a lot here. Yeah, you can supercharge your custom forms. That's really what this is about. This is where you can take all the advanced APIs of the web form module and bring them into your custom code and make your life a lot easier. Um, that that node widget that I created to kind of create a list of multiple nodes I've used on projects and has saved me a huge amount of time. And it's a nice, clean user experience. So what about reusing advanced web form APIs and features? Well, there are some features that are not reusable. Multi-step forms, submission display, handlers and variants, access controls, PDF generation. They're not reusable because they're really tightly coupled to a web form. And it's not something that's easy to expose. Um, with that said, there are APIs that are reusable. Modal dialog support, there's a helper class to pop open modal dialogs as needed. All the AJAX behaviors to in the web form module are, are tied to traits that you can reuse. There's a huge set of utility classes, whether it's to manipulate arrays, forms, elements, they're available and you can use them. And even with functional testing, if you build out your own custom forms, there are web form test traits that can make your life a lot easier. The last one you gotta go look at. So in the web form module, there's a test files directory and it contains examples of every single type of file that you might ha ever have someone upload or need to upload to test something. I use it to generate tests in the web form module, but I use it for outside projects too. If someone says, I need an example of a PNG, this directory has an example of a PNG that you could use. You gotta spend a little time. And uh, you know the real takeaway is you know, help improve APIs by contributing code and ideas to the web form module and the Drupal community. And you know, you can help build and share you know, web forms and Drupal form APIs by writing documentation, reviewing patches, adding new APIs, refactoring existing. And you can contribute to the web form modules examples and there's a dedicated examples module in the Drupal community. And frankly, that's how I learned how to do everything in the web form module, looking at all these examples, especially the Ajax stuff, which can be very complex. There's even examples of Drupal's core form API, how to get started with it. Well, I hope you got something out of this and you can learn more about me at jrockwoods.com. Thank you for your time.